Welcome to Out of the Box with Christine, the podcast for conscious entrepreneurs. Are you willing to step into your greatness? Are you ready to shine? Well, get ready, truth seeker. You're in for an amazing ride. And now, here's the host of the show, Christine Blasdale. Welcome back to Out of the Box with Christine, the podcast for conscious entrepreneurs. I am your host, motivational media coach, Christine Blasdale. And the show is, you know, the show is all about making sure that we have the tools, the wisdom to help guide us to make our lives a little bit better. And today is no exception. I have an incredible guest joining me. Paige Stevenson is a master intuitive and she is also a soul guided conduit for angelic energy. She's in communion with the angels to help find balance and trust in your world. And her website, I want you to make sure you check it out. We'll have a link in the show notes. It's the intuitive advisor.com. That's the intuitive advisor.com. And once you hear from my beautiful guest page, you're going to run, you're going to sprint. You're going to do the, <laughs> you're going to do the, the quick sprint to her website to check her out and maybe even have a session with her or just find out more information. But with all that said, Paige, welcome to Out of the Box. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited. Well, you know, just um, you alone, Christine, just make me so joyful. So I'm, I'm already ramped up with your joy that you have. And so I'm even, um, Yes, I I have to calm myself because now we're all excited. <laughs> <laughs> they won't come in the room. Well, you know what? As soon as I met you, I knew it was. See, I have those goosebumps, uh, the hair that sticks up. Uh, yes, I, right, right now I got it going all the way down my neck and my back. We call those angel bumps. <laughs> angel bumps. <laughs> angel bumps that those those bumps or the the hair that's that's raised mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. me that's recognition that is yes that's a big yes from the universe it's like oh, um, cool. this is good it's almost like I hear applause like I hear you know the crowd <laughs> crowd doing a standing and the ovation crowd screamed. yeah yes. and that's so, cool and that's what I felt when I met you and it was and that 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 message that mantra was you know get her on the show so that more people can hear the beautiful message that you have. Thank you. Paige. And so um, it's my honor to have you on the show. And uh, for folks that are listening, you're, you might be listening on one of the major platforms, uh, Apple podcast, Spotify, or you might be watching this on YouTube, which I highly recommend because my guest is absolutely gorgeous. You can watch <laughs> it on YouTube, but make sure if you resonate with this and what we're talking about, share this show share the mm. video or share the the podcast with others yes. because that's the whole idea and we never yes. know do we Paige? we never know no. who's going to be listening who's going to be watching and how it can impact their lives that's what i love about technology and this, this yes. beautiful this beautiful time that we're in so welcome to the show girl oh thank you thank you um can we talk about where you are and where I am? Like the we're across sure. the miles for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like holy catfish, Batman. We're ways away from each other. Yeah. And that's what I love about technology. And you know, I'm here in Canada on the West Coast. Um, no, I'm not in Toronto. People, oh, Toronto? No. <laughs> There's another part of Canada. <laughs> And you're and you're not always necessarily like knee deep in ice and snow. No, <laughs> that's what people think. I know. If you think of um, Seattle, Washington, yeah. we're very similar. Um, and so, however often they get snow is probably how often we get it. And so it's it's and we're beautiful. Like every every place on earth is beautiful, as far as I'm concerned. And I'm super happy to just be heard and seen uh, because don't we all just want to get our message out there and just see who can I help? Mm. Um, you know, there's not enough of us to, to help everybody. So that's why I really encourage the people listening. If you're thinking about, does anybody want my stuff? 
Absolutely. There is somebody waiting for you. And just get it out. It's got to come out. <laughs> it doesn't matter because we're all an expert in something. Yeah. You know, I remember I had a um, a, a woman who want, she was talking to me and, and wanted to be my client. And she said, but I'm only I'm just a housewife. And I went, are you kidding me? <laughs> I said, Ooh. first of all, do you know how many how many people can relate to you in, in single single moms and single dads? doesn't have to be just women but I said yeah how many people can relate to you and your struggle and I said you have a gift that you can share with others and it's it's getting through the day for her it was getting through the day-to-day with kids and not losing her you know stuff (laughs) yes yeah right (laughs) rolling with the punches and that's a gift to be able to to inspire people and to make them laugh as well I believe yeah that's, that's why so they funny pay, you mention it. Why they pay well, comedians uh, so much money, right? <laughs> right. That's funny you mention that because just yesterday I was talking to a friend, and I was reflecting myself because I was a mom that did not have to look after my kids. I chose to work, and they were in full time daycare, and I didn't have to potty train them or anything. It was beautiful. I was, you know, so motherhood was a breeze for me. <laughs> Well, I laugh about it now, but at the time, it was a lot of guilt that I was working, Mm. you know, so I applaud the women that do make the choice to stay home and can stay home. And there's just so many benefits to it and not to be guilty about going and having to work either, because that's a gift in itself. And it'll unfold as you move along. And so, and you're also anyways. you're also teaching your children too to go after their their passion and their dreams if they're absolutely and it's not about being successful and making a lot of money it's seeing their parents you know passionate about something and and mm-hmm. that's the other thing we have to as as parents I'm a I'm a parent now I recently well not recently I guess but I became a parent of two teenagers <laughs> ah. yeah and well there is a good challenge yes yeah. that is a good challenge <laughs> And, you you know, you all of a sudden you become aware of what you do and how you speak. Well, I'm very much aware of how I speak because I've been in broadcasting for 20 plus years. So I'm very aware of the power of our voice and the power of words. That's why they call it spelling, right? You're casting a spell. So can you, let's talk about that. Cause I, like I said, I'm, I try to be um, conscious of the words that I use and the framing of things, right? Yes. I try, I do the, the, the pancake flip on some things. I flip things or I'll reframe some things that maybe other people might think of as a negative uh, or, or something bad that's happened. I'll sort of reframe it, but let's talk about those powerful, the power of words and then, oh my gosh. and then get into also, um, uh, the beautiful beings that surround you and that you work with. Yes. Well, I'm uh, it's so loaded for me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just asked you a big question. <laughs> um, well, because Christine, I, um, it's something that I teach in my class, um, um, in my three day called journey to happy uh, is the element of the words we speak and what are you saying like yes you and I are having words right now and everything's positive and effective and you know no problem saying it and but what if you're not able to speak so freely what if you're in your quiet moments and you're not liking yourself And what are you saying? Even if it's not out loud, everything you say in your head is just as loud as out here. And it's probably louder inside screaming. And so I caution my clients when they start saying things like, I can't do this and I I won't do this and I, I don't think I can do that. And they start doubting themselves. Um, what I remind them of, think of that little girl that thought she could do anything. She thought she could 
whatever her dreams were when she was little, she had this beautiful vision for herself. And she was able to say, you know, um, I'm going to be the teacher and, and you play teacher with your friends. And she didn't question if she could do it or if she had the education or the facilities. She just did it because that was her imagination. But that was a lot of talking in the head. But if you have the thoughts in the head that keep defeating you, that's when it comes into problems. And a lot of times, you know, we think we're not succeeding because of something out here. It's not out here. It's in here. It's this space between these two temples. Uh, somebody gave me a measurement once, and I can't remember what the measurement, this here to here from, you know, temple to temple, however many inches, centimeters, whatever measurement you're in. But that space is all the capacity you have to come up with the right words. Two words that I want to bring awareness to you. And this goes a little bit into the NLP world. Just a little. Okay. I'm not proficient at NLP, but I've I've got enough that I'm okay. Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> um when you use the word try, try is a word that means soft fail. Because you can try to do something. Either you do it or you don't do it. So if you said, I'm going to try to get pregnant. Are you pregnant or are you, aren't you know, like try has a different connotation and we use it, so, you know, oh, I'll try. I'll try to make it for dinner tomorrow night or I'll try to make the appointment. Are you going to or aren't you? And people say it all the time. So we quite often use the word try. So just be aware of the try word. And when you're in my class, <laughs> you were told, no, you said try, try again. And we try again. And they keep tr going over it and going over it and going when they're asking for something or trying to manifest something. I'm going to try to do this and try to do that. No, you're either going to do it or you're not going to do it. So either you're pregnant or you're not, or you're getting a job or you're not getting a job. I'm not going to try. You can say I'm going to get do the steps necessary to get a job. Yeah. But trying means there's you're setting yourself up for failure. So that's when I get a lot more into this. But that's one word. The other word is the word not not. See, the universe doesn't know the word not. So when you say, I am not, I am not lazy, I am not whatever descriptive word you're going to use about, or anytime you use the word not, you can drop not out and basically you saying, I am lazy, or I don't, which is do not, I don't want a lazy husband or a lazy wife whatever you want to say. You're saying, if you break it down, I do not want a lazy spouse. You're saying, I want a lazy spouse. The word not is silent to the universe. So, so many times when people are manifesting, they want to bring in a new job. They want to buy that new car, get that new house or whatever, lose 10 pounds or whatever they're manifesting. They talk about what they don't want. They're not talking about what it is that they want to bring in. Big difference. You can't bring in something if you're focusing on what you don't want. Mm. If you're always talking yellow and you want orange. I'll give you an example. If I said to you, Christine, There's a forest of blue trees. I don't want you to focus on the red tree. Where does your head immediately go to? The red tree. The red tree. But if I said, Christine, there's a beautiful forest of blue trees out there. 
There could be a red one in there, but I'm not focusing on it. I'm telling you what to focus on rather than what not to focus on. So when I said, but don't look at the red, red one or however I word it, you immediately go there and all you see is this red. You forget about the blue and it's like, oh, interesting. This is how our brain works. Yeah. And the same thing happens with um, when we have clients and and you say, can I get a test? You know, can I get your review on my work? And they go, oh, five, 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 five out of five, you know, like, and then somebody goes one and you're like, what? One? <laughs> what did I do? And what did we focus? We've got a thousand of fives, but one, one. And where does our head go? Because we are so patterned to look at the negative first. There you go. And so through time, you can reverse this out. I was a child that was told we would never be successful business owners because we weren't the people born that way. You have to be born that way. That's what I was told. We were the family that had to work hard for our money. And I'm sure lots of people have heard work hard for your money. Well, how about we just work effectively for our money? Get a good plan and play. That's, you know, this is how words corrupt our minds. This is why we can't go on further because we're stuck in our stuff. And we're like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. How about what are you doing right? Focus on that. Oh, now you start seeing a different. And as soon as you start shifting your thoughts and your words, then your outside world starts manifesting differently. This takes discipline. And it's not difficult. It's possible. If I can do it, you can do it. And I say, I don't say that lightly. Like I've come from a lot of, my family still talks negatively. They're still stuck in their stuff. I call it the muddle. They're still in their muddle. So they play around in their puddle of muddle, and then they think I'm the wacko because I'm talking to the other side. And it's like, mm, let's have a little look here. Mm, nope. It's a little different on this side of the fence. Well, yes. Also, when you're focusing on the negative, what happens is, I don't know if it's our ego or I don't know exactly what it is, but there's something within us that wants to prove that we're right. That's the same thing. Like if you're in an argument or something like that, and it doesn't matter. It's like, I need to win no matter what I want to win. Right. But when you're looking at the negative or your worldview is that is in the negative, then there's, there's something within you that wants to prove that you're right. So when you look out into the world, you're going to see all those things that confirm that belief. Right. Yeah. And it's so interesting because with the with looking at it a, a different way, you actually see the things that reaffirm how amazing you are or how the work that you do, if you're a coach or a consultant or a service, if you provide a service of some sort, even if you're an author, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you'll get that feedback that, oh, my goodness, you've changed my life. You really helped me. You're amazing. But isn't that interesting? It's so true that what we focus on, we we create, we co-create, we feed it, mm -hmm. right? It's but it's so um, it's so simplistic. Yeah, us humans want we to like make it, it complicated, Pate. We right? want to make it it's, complicated. It's got to be really complicated. It's got to be complicated because everything is so hard, right? Isn't that what we were told? It you got to work hard for it. You got to work harder. Yeah. You got to work hard. I always oh. said, I mean, even when I was little, I got the idea. I mean, I got the concept of work smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. And that's just because like I watched my grandmother and I saw how she, even though she had a little, she was an Aries, she was a little fiery, like, like she had a little temper, but mm -hmm. she was able to let things like a duck with like water off the back, you know, Mm -hmm. she'd, she'd blow up and then it would be gone. She wouldn't hold on to things for a long time. And even just in her day to day or the, the things that she would be doing, if it was in the garden or if she'd be making a meal, I, I watched how she, 
she did it smarter not harder yes <laughs> and, and it's so much easier and it's so much makes life so much easier doesn't it oh way way and you know it's it's easy it's easier when you have somebody around you that is influencing you in a good way when you're the lone wolf sitting in your space by yourself and nobody's critiquing you know and you're just babbling away to yourself working on might be writing might be dusting might be jogging whatever and what is your dialogue going on in your head are you talking about back in the day or are you talking about the future or are you talking about right now because there's nothing wrong with looking at you know back in the day oh I remember that time oh Kuchikula, you know whatever but do you stay there? Are you always talking about the good old days? We A lot of our seniors, I'm one of them, a lot of our seniors talk about the good old days and all they're doing is regurgitating. And I'm not saying it isn't good stuff, but is it moving them forward? How about talk about today? Did you go for a walk? Did you phone a friend? Did you play some bingo? Did you do some lawn bowling? Did you, you know, do something? Are you in now? Because when you're in now, frequency is where you can actually move forward with it. If you're always reminiscing, you're being dragged back. And so it's like, it's like uh, going back and it's no, we're going forward. We need to go forward. Can we see what's forward? We trust. Big word, yeah. trust, trust. And that's where people check out. They don't want to know. I want to know. I want to know. People people always go to psychics. Tell me, is there a guy? Tell me, do I have a new job? Tell me, do I have this? It's like, it doesn't matter if we see it right now. It could change tomorrow because you keep moving along in your world. So, that, you know, it's there's no psychic that can tell you absolutely for certain that something is going to be. And please don't send me emails on this and you go, well, yes, I'm a <laughs> new psychic and they blah, 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 blah. Then good for you. That happened. But what I'm saying is don't be running to a psychic all the time to get what am I going to be doing? Because your life evolves and things change. You Every think second. you're going down this path. You yes. think that this is, oh, it's another day. And then something catastrophic happens. Somebody smashes into your house, had a, you know, wiped out in front of your yard. And you're like, what? And it, things change. It just keeps going on and on and on. And what's being said here? Mm -hmm. I can talk all the time, but if in my head, I'm thinking, oh my God, I wonder if Christine's even paying attention to me. Is she, you know, is she liking what I'm, if I've got this dialogue going, how effective am I, am I going to be? Actually, I'm thinking, damn, it, I'm it, it affects, all, <laughs> and, it, and it affects all, see, how do I say this? Mm. How we feel and the words that we say to ourselves, the thoughts that we have, because I do believe that some people live in a in a mental prison because they don't everything that they see is an is like a negative. Yes. Um, but when you're able to, even through the things that might be icky or hard or whatever, however you want to classify them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Yesterday, um, I really needed to get into our pantry, right? Because we've got two teenagers, uh, four adults three cats, a dog, you know, all, all kinds of crazy things happen here. And so our pantry was getting to the point where it was like, it was depressing because it was depressing us. It was just a mess and unorganized. And so yesterday I just said, I'm going to take a couple hours to organize it and make it nice. Now I could have taken the path of man, these people I live with are pigs. I've always got to clean up after them. <laughs> Look what I got to do. Look at this honey that's smeared all over this. Okay. I could have looked at it that way, but what I did is I put on some cool blues music. I love blues. I put on some cool blues music on Spotify, cranked it out throughout the house 
and had a little little glass of wine that I I nursed through the whole thing. And I got one of those little labelers, you know, those dino, those, those things you could put. I put little labels on things. I got really pretty little boxes. And I spent several hours cleaning and organizing and putting it together. And then the excitement of showing each member of the household, right? Oh my god. Come look at my pantry. You know, and I <laughs> open it and I go, and they're like, wow, wow. So I took something that was a considered a chore and flipped it around to be um, an experience and was happy about it yes and what that brilliant. is is that there's no resentment you're not yes. walking around with resentment and that energy goes out into the universe and guess what it's going to send you more things to be resentful for right yes that's how that's, it, that's how it works that's so now i have um, a beautiful little shiny pantry right you will, you open your pantry now and you go, oh yeah, I did this. I did that. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I was very clever on the, you know, I was very clever on the labeling. So some of them are kind of cute and funny, but um, yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, it's the same thing with taxes. I've heard people say, I have to do taxes. Oh mm -hmm. God, I have to do taxes. I say when it's that time, I get to do taxes. Yes. I get to do my taxes. That means I actually made some money. Right? right. Yes. That's so, brilliant. Like people need to hear on, that I, again. I still put the you music You got to say that again. Oh, what? You got to say that again, because that's, this is what people do all the time. They don't realize when they're saying, I got to do my taxes, that they're, they're making it a negative and you've just spun it. You're saying, absolutely. I get to do my taxes. This means I made money. Hello. Yeah. Do you hear that? Like yes. that's like, just think people, how you're saying things like, oh my gosh. Well, we so put it in our minds that it's a negative experience mm -hmm. doing your mm -hmm. taxes, going to the dentist. Even when I'm, a, I, you know, I a little hesitant with the dentist thing sometimes because I know it can, you know, cause a little pain. <laughs> but what I do in the dentist chair, you feel free to use this page. I'll be in the dentist chair and they're, you know, they're scraping, they're drilling and they're getting, they're touching a nerve or whatever. And as I'm, as I'm sitting there with my mouth open and drooling, I just, I have a mantra and my mantra, and I've done this mantra whenever I've been in pain or anything, because I've had surgeries and stuff. And I say, this is only temporary. This is only temporary. <laughs> only temporary. This is only temporary. Did you pick up that I'm going to the dentist soon? Is that what you're telling no! me? No, <laughs> I'm not that psychic. <laughs> But it, 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 feel free to use it. This is only temporary. This is only temporary. Yes. Um, it's worked. It's helped me in so many situations. Yes. But especially Absolutely. at the dentist. Because, and I just keep breathing. Sometimes I'll hum. I don't know if you do this. I go, I go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the dentist is just looking at me like, what are you humming? I go, it's a non-existent song. <laughs> it's Christine's. Please just let's get this th get through this together. <laughs> well, you have beautiful teeth, so you must get along with your dentist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they enjoy seeing me come in. Yes. I have a I have a good dentist dentist thing for you. When I was in college, I had to have all four wisdom teeth pulled at the same time, all of them. Ow! And they give you a little pill. They say take it only like so many minutes before you come into the office into the the dental thing. And I took it and I guess I took it maybe a little too early, whatever. So I, I went in there and I was with a friend and I was just kind of like, you know, hey, kind of thing. <laughs> and they get you in the chair and all of a sudden I'm like out, right? I'm, I'm, I'm conked out, gone. I wake up and I, I can, you know, I could feel something had happened. The dentist was on the other side of the room looking at me like I was like, a, an evil <laughs> monster and the three nurses that apparently had to hold me down said the moment he went in to pull the first tooth your hand went down and grabbed him right in between the legs and you would oh. not let go <laughs> you wouldn't let go and so we had <laughs> we had three people try to get here <laughs> Oh I did not God. know. I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, 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 um, he, I don't think he appreciated that. 
Yeah. <laughs> we're not gonna hurt any we're not gonna hurt each other, are we? <laughs> I don't know why I told you that story. Or, or the listeners or the viewers. It just came up. Um all right, let's talk about what you do, Paige, because right. I think you bring such importance uh, and clarity to people who are really struggling. Um, mm-hmm. if, if not struggling in their business, struggling with life in general, um, relationships and all of that. But let's talk about what what is it that you um, love doing for your clients, for people that come to you? And especially, I know, because you work with the angelic realm, um, I find mm-hmm. this fascinating. Can you give us an mm-hmm. idea of the process? Well, first, I want to preface it by saying um, I want to take the word struggle away mm-hmm. because, um, I yeah, that may be you're struggling, they're struggling, but let's call it you're recalibrating. Let's say that you're rejigging yourself to be more optimal. Like I, I like to keep it always on a positive um positive spin because people don't like to hear that they're struggling (laughs) you're struggling (laughs) um no i i we have come through a lot and some of us did well with it some of it didn't do some of us didn't do well with it some of us just went on as if nothing was happening there are some of those people out there i've come i've come across them and i'm like holy cow how did that work um and so I never like to be pointing fingers and saying you know oh you need help because you you have to self-identify or nothing's going to help you you have to be able to go okay I'm not doing well myself I need help and this is one of the gifts you can give yourself to say I need assistance I I can't do this myself I need somebody to come in and assist. And then you'll find the person that works for you. You know, like if you're listening to Christine or listening to me at this for this video or um, audio or however you're listening to it, if one of us is resonating with you, then connect with us and ask more questions and say, tell me more. You know, because not everybody is for everybody. There's no, even the Tony Robbins of the world there. He's not for everybody. Some people can't stand him. And I'm like, well, I like him. It's cool, dude. But, you know, he's not for everybody. The same thing with me. I'm a very boisterous person because I was not allowed to speak so much as a child. (laughs) I do all my talking now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and um I'm not shy on what I say I'm I don't you know I don't know if your show's x-rated or whatever you call it but I talking about the vagina and the penis and you know orgasms and all of those kinds of things that's part of our life if it has to come up and be talked about yes. then let's talk about it you know and not oh did you pee pee you know this kind of bullshit stuff no <laughs> and <laughs> Um, so I'm very um, in your face. I, I, if you're into numerology, I'm in a nine path, and I'm ascending in this lifetime, which means I'm not coming back. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've got a lot of wisdom, and I've got a lot of wisdom to pass on, and. I'm a wisdom keeper, I'm a master intuitive and an angel channeler. And so all of those pieces, I'm, I've am i got the beautiful loving archangels to work with. I work with 15 major archangels. If you're on video, you can see this picture behind me. This is my angelic team. This is Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Raphael, Mother Mary, and Jesus. So when I work with a client and I call in my team, like I am working with my team right now, um, Archangel Gabriel is assisting me. Um, That's who comes forward and works with me. And then when I work with my client, then I get your, like if I was working with Christine, I would say, Christine, is it okay if we work with your team? 
And as soon as she says yes, now the angels know, okay, she's agreeing. I'm not just forcing her to do this. Correct. Then our teams talk to each other. And you might say, well, who's my team? You have to uh, email me and ask me. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're, they're not elusive to certain people. They're for everybody. They're non-denominational. I'm not here to interrupt any kind of religious or um, whatever faith-driven business um, um, praying you do or anything. I'm not saying get rid of that and bring in me. That's not what I'm saying. This is what you might call an add-on or um, a, a complement to it. A bonus. However you want to frame it. A bonus, yes. Um, but I know I have a lot of clients co that come from certain religions that are in a lot of shame and guilt because they're told that this is sacrilegious, what I do. And I was told that too. And my family still believes that I'm on the wrong side of the fence. They're like, she's going to hell. It's like, mm, yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. As a young child, I was working with the angels. I didn't know that they were the angels when I was little. I And my mom didn't know what they were. She just knew that I always wanted to have an extra seat at the table for my imaginary friend, because that's what my mom called them. And, oh, she's got her imaginary friend. And I was like, okay. Well, then, because I was raised in a religious cult, which is another story in itself, and the preacher man found out about my imaginary friends. Oh, great. Uh oh So to the house, he came and told my mom in front of me, you shut that down right now. That's against the Lord's way. And I was like, oh. as a little one, I'm like, oh, mommy. And I went to my mom and I'm hiding behind her skirt. And I'm like. I'm sorry, mommy, and you know that whole scene in it. It's, it's like, so of course, what happens is I go into fear. I thought my imaginary friend was doing harm or something. Like I was, I didn't know I'm a little one, and so as a result, I shut myself down. I withdrew. Can you imagine? I was quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not anymore. And so, but I was in fear for years until I got into my teens. And then I started to have some awakenings, we'll call it. Like when I was at my aunt's farm and was I was 15, I think, 13 or 15, I forget now. And I hit the fence with the motorbike, the barbed wire fence and got knocked out and it was the angels that were saying get up get up get up and because I would have bled out if I hadn't got up and I did and I got up and I started walking back to where my cousins were waiting for me and that's where I met the cow and the cow was talking and chewing her cud and going okay block and it's like okay and then that was kind of the start of it and then I've had lots of episodes, if you want to call it. But I've never been in fear because they're my friends. I didn't know that you weren't seeing them. And I saw them. And I very seldom came across somebody else that went, oh, that was Archangel Michael. And I'd be like, oh, you saw that? <laughs> <laughs> And like it was, it was my norm, but not everybody's. So it wasn't until somebody said, "Oh, did you see that?" And I went, "I did. You saw that?" And they were like, "Yeah, I see it too." And I'm like, "Oh my god! Wait a minute! You're the only one that's ever said that to me. How come nobody else says that?" And she says, "Cause they don't see it like you see." It. I went, "Oh, yeah." Like it sounds silly now. But if you don't know that they don't know what you know, you don't know, right? And it was like, well, that sounds silly. <laughs> so it's just, you know, because of my 
ingrained teachings from little one, get married, have the picket fence, the station wagon, the husband, and the baby's in the back seat, because that's, you know, I'm not in America, well, I'm in North America, but um, that's the, the dream, eh, to, to have that, you know, family vision. It's like, ugh, I'm not, I, I'm not saying it's um, <laughs> wrong. I'm just saying, weren't there any other options they could have told me about? Because that was all that was, you know, you got to get that car, that car, and get that good job with the pension. Oh, I need a good job with a good pension. Well, so I, what do I do? I go out and get the good job with the pension. And then I go back to school and get more education. And, oh, now I can really get the good pension. Oh, my God, I've got this good job. And all this time I am dabbling into, because back then there was no internet, like everything you can Google now, there wasn't those options. You had to go to the library or read a newspaper or a magazine, you know, and or listen to in Canada, we have CBC radio. Boring. Um, anyways, we, that's how you got your information. You couldn't just Google it and have 50 million hits in less than 30 seconds. You're, you had to go find this information. So I kept dabbling and kept dabbling. And in my head, all this time, I have had a vision of me in a princess gown. Yes, I'm in a pink princess gown. And I'm in front of my audience. And I am talking to my audience who is all in white. I don't know where I am in the world, but I'm talking to my audience and they're in white. And I am telling them a message that is healing them. And they've all come to hear this message. That has been my vision since little one. Hmm. And so it's Princess Paige. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, as a little girl, I had blonde hair with ringlets all around my head because that's how mom did my hair for church. And I was quite cute when I was little. And so today, I love being on stage. I love being a healer because what I didn't know back then, I was born a healer. I know that now. So I have not only healing hands, but healing words, healing with the angels. There's like so many ways to get healed. Most people don't realize that they're a healer also to some degree. Just by being in communion with somebody, just by sitting down with a friend and giving a uh, lending an ear so they can just talk it out while they talk through their muddle helps them. That's healing to them. Yeah. We don't learn this. We just think healing only comes from, oh, the blessed ones, the ones that are gifted. We're all healers. But I am a healer many lifetimes. And in a nine path that I'm in, I've had thousands of lifetimes. This isn't my first rodeo. So <laughs> when <laughs> that's why I'm a know-it-all. And I don't <laughs> I love being a know-it-all. Go ahead and challenge me and see if you can challenge me. I bet you can't. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, those, she's going to take me up on that now. She's going to, I got to think of something. What can I challenge her? <laughs> Anyways, so my point is, is that as you're sitting there listening and wondering about yourself, you know, yes, I talk to the angels. You can talk to the angels. They're not just for me. Huh? Are you kidding? No, they're for everybody. Everybody. Archangel Michael has communicated to us that if everybody in the world, in the world, did you hear that? Everybody was to ask of him a favor, like tune in to me, Archangel Michael. We all did it simultaneously. 
he would be able to handle it. But people have been told, oh, don't ask, because when you ask him, somebody else isn't getting. It's like, I'm going to say bullshit on that right now. Stop that thinking. There is enough and more enough for every single soul on this earth. Every soul. Absolutely. Oh, please. And so here's me as me. And I miss, as a child, abused, raped, abandoned, thrown out, discarded, dismissed. You name the word. It's been, I've lived it, been through it. And now I live a joy, joyful and happy life. Why? It's a choice. Did I get touched on the head with a magic wand and go, ding, you're now happy, Paige. Oh, thank you. No, I chose this because it is a choice. Remember that. Happiness isn't you just inherit it. It's a choice. Every day, it's a choice. And that's why I teach what I teach, because I want people to have their own little regiment, if you want to call it. Every day, they're doing something for the betterment of this vessel. Because when this vessel starts breaking down, who are you blaming for that? Mm. Is it something your mother said, your dad said, your neighbor said? Your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your brother, sister is one of them that they they fucked you up, right? No, you did it yourself. Stop it. Take ownership and start realizing that this vessel you're in charge of. You've been given this vessel to see how well you can do. If you don't like it, who do you think's going to fix it? That person over there? Mm mm. Ding, ding. Oh, hello. Ding, ding. Hello. Ding, ding. It's you. Yes, it's you. If I can do it, you can do it. I'm almost in retirement age. My age in my face is going the other way. Why do you think? Because I am letting go of what I think others think of me. Oh, what? I no longer wear glasses. What? This is the magic that can happen when you believe. And every one of you have it in you. This is why I do what I do. It's not craziness. I'm not going to sell you some pills or, you know, stand on one leg and drink apple juice upside down or something. You know, like, no, this isn't, this is, what are you telling yourself here? What are your words? What are your daily words? What are you saying at the beginning of the day to get your day started so you have the best day possible and that you're allowing anything to happen for you that is in your highest and best good? Can you imagine if you just woke up and you said, okay, if there's something beautiful going to happen today, bring it. And something does happen. And you're like, oh, my God, that was so cool. Can I get a repeat of that tomorrow? And it happens. Like, it's it's possible when you believe. So you got to trust and believe. Trust and believe. And for a gal that came out of a world where I was told I would never amount to anything, literally, if I can change my thoughts and have miracles happening every day, do you think you can do it? Yes. Like, just meeting you, Christine. How did that happen? It just happened. There's no magic thing. Contact Christine. It's, <laughs> it's, it just happens. When you just get into the vibe and the things start flowing, it's you'll just flow. start getting the right emails, the right people, the right 
deliveries, the right weather, the like everything will just go in. And, and hey, you want to come on a trip with me? What? You're taking me to Ireland? Uh-huh. I'm going to Ireland. <laughs> this is so true. I'm not BSing you. But I want you to know as you're sitting out there yeah. and you're sitting in your puddle of muddle, because we all start there. We all start in the puddle. It's where we get ourselves. And I I know I've been there, done that. I was once in bed for two years because I was al depresso. This is going back quite a ways. And now I sit in my joy and happiness. So I know what it's like when you can't get your ass out of bed every day. I know what it's like. It's tough. And then to top it all off, I'm not exactly super skinny. I don't know if you can tell that. I'm sure you can. I got, you know, at least little. Thing You're thing. beautiful. Shut up. Shut <laughs> but up. I'm, I'm what I'm going to phrase as voluptuous. Okay. <laughs> yes. I'm not narrow, what I call the skinny girls. I'm not a narrow person. I am a bit wider. Curvaceous. Yes, that too. But what I'm saying, why I'm saying this is because it has nothing to do with your exterior. And that took me a few years to figure that out. It's what's inside. What's inside? Mm -hmm. what, what's, what's going on in here? Is everything running nicely? Are the thoughts feeding the body and the body's feeding the thoughts? It, it's a reciprocation. Back and forth, back and forth. I love my body. If I could, I would walk naked everywhere because I love my body. When I grew up, I didn't hear that. I was shamed about my body, which is sad because lots of people are. Lots of people are. And so now I love my body. And everybody that comes around me loves me. What? And guess who likes to sing? And guess who's a karaoke queen? Yeah. And I guess who was told to shut up when she was younger? And you don't know how to sing. You're off key. I'm like, what? I've now been told I'm a second soprano. What? Dun, 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 dun. Yep. Now, I'm telling you all of this because I want you to know that I've been on the wrong side and now I'm on the good side. So I actually don't talk about the good and the bad. I talk about what's serving you and not serving you. Are you serving or not or serving or serving? Not so well. There's that not word. But which side do you want to be on? Is it getting you good, good stuff or not so good? You know, like, are you making good choices for yourself? And your body will talk to you. If you're eating the wrong stuff, you'll feel it. Either, either go right through you and you have diarrhea or you'll vomit it up. Or you'll get tummy pains. Start paying attention to what you're consuming to your vessel. If you had a beautiful, expensive car, we'll pick a Mercedes because I have one. <laughs> Am I going to choose poor grade oil to put in it? Am I going to put in low grade gas? <clears throat> no, for the $5 million I paid for it? No, I'm putting the best in it. Because I want it to run well. I don't want to have to spend another $50 million to get a new car because I put the wrong stuff in. So what about this thing here? What are you putting in it? Are you drinking a bunch of Diet Coke? Diet anything? Stop. That's all chemical. Are you eating raw veggies? Good fruit? Oh, papaya and pineapple from Hawaii. Thank you. I'll have some. Mm -hmm. All of those, you know, eat your veggies. It's true. 
because that's good roughage, cleans your colon. If you're having problems pooping, then you're hanging on to your shit, literally. Think of it, people. Like, you know, like, these are things we do to ourselves. And we don't even know that we're doing it until it hurts. And then we go, how come my back hurts? How come my shoulders? I can hardly move my neck. Oh, anything across the, the shoulders here? You're shouldering everybody else's worries. You're holding the weight of the world on your shoulders. As soon as you take that responsibility off yourself. Ah, yes. Because there was times when I was like, uh, um, can you help me put my top on? Uh, I know. I've been there, done that. There isn't anything that I haven't had happen to me yet. Well, and don't send me a letter. Go, Have you ever this? Have you ever? Don't send it. Okay. I've been through a lot, and I just want you to know that I'm sit standing, sitting in wholeness. My whole being is able-bodied, and I still walk every day, walk, 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 because this is my vessel. I'm taking care of it. And I might have a white Bacardi Coke, but I've changed the Bacardi or the Coke now because of caffeine. So now I just do white Bacardi and seven up. Oh, is that good? Well, yeah, I can go to sleep at night. <laughs> was that good? Okay, now I'm going to try that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's got to be white Bacardi. Okay, yeah. I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. But this is, this is, you know, I, I get on these rants and how do I do a lot of this stuff? Every decision I make, every decision, like the decision to book the time with um, you, Christine, I get my little thought. You know, I have a little routine that I do for asking a question. Is it for my highest and best good to have a conversation with Christine? And I feel into it. And if something in my body is going, uh -huh, or... I'm getting it's either you're going to hear something, feel something, yeah, or see something. Some way it's going to come across you. That's yeah. your intuitiveness. Hello. Yeah. And listen or pay attention to it. What is it saying? Yes. Everything I decide on. I was going to buy something today and I thought, oh, I'll just check in because my team, should I do this? Because this, the marketing for this person was really good and it was pulling me in. And I was like, oh, Okay, I've got my card ready. Let's go. <laughs> and then you asked. And then I asked and it was like, eh. no, my child. It's like, oh, okay. And then they're like, um, you already know this. And I was like, oh. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, thank you. I love how you, I just love, I just love you. <laughs> I do. <laughs> because... It's like, well, and it's like also like meeting a kindred spirit or meeting, you know, like you're like a, a family member who's like not dysfunctional. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like if you ever, I don't know if you've ever had that relationship, like when I was really little too, when my, with my cousins, we had a bond because we had all been through the same crap, you know alcoholic family and the, the, all that stuff so we would just look at each other and go and do that nod like <laughs> uh -huh. yes yeah. our you know our parents were really messed up yep yep we lived through yeah. it yep yep <laughs> so yeah. that's how i feel with you that's so funny christine my cousins were my friends just because in the cult we weren't allowed outside friends right so you so had we to have yes and so we got to laugh at our parents too did you see what Auntie Betty did? It yeah, like, did you see? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Oh, Paige, I could I could talk to you forever and ever and ever. Um, you're I want to invite you uh back to out of the box with Christine anytime. Um oh my god. Anytime you're welcome to, to come back. And <sighs> um, because I know, well, I mean, I got a beautiful child. it's like it's like having a 
gorgeous, beautiful meal and staying at a five star hotel and <laughs> and 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 going in the beautiful, warm, tropical waters Ooh, without and- even having to leap, without even having to pack a bag. I got oh, to have that. Oh, that's so. so beautiful. So thank you. And on behalf of our listeners and our viewers on YouTube, thank you so much. Oh, really. well, this is really cool. And I truly want to thank you, Christine. Um, I there's it's there's something about you too. You've just got such I said at the beginning of the show, there's just something about you um that you want to lean in and listen to you. Thank like you. And so I'm just like, oh, yeah. And it's your beautiful melodic voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank I'd, have you. People, I'd have people meet me after years and years of listening to me on the at the radio station. And they would go, oh, uh, they go, oh, that voice, that voice. I knew it. I would know it anywhere. And cool. you, don't, you don't realize especially when you're just doing radio. Right. There's no video. In those days, I didn't do any video. But um, mm-hmm. people would just recognize me from my voice. Cool. And, um, and there's a great power, just as there's power in the words that we use, there's mm-hmm. power in our voice and how we how we use it. And um, I want to use mine for good. So yes, thank you again for for recognizing that that beautiful connection that we have. And I, I know we I know we probably we, we were like burned at the stake together in some past live or something like that. And we looked at each other and we went, we went, I'll see you um, a little bit after this whole co- a pandemic. <laughs> and we won't have to burn at the stake for speaking the truth. Right. Right. We can do it freely now. Yay. Um, well, listen, my yes. life is richer because of you. And I want to thank, thank you, you for that, for bringing the sunshine to my world. So thank you so, Absolutely. so much. I'm in, I'm in gratitude. I will mm-hmm. do anything. You be, let's do some work together. Let's let's kick this up a notch. I would love to work with you in any way possible. So um, oh my let's, gosh. let's leave that open. Let's let's ask the, the beautiful angel guides to to just help bring that help us bring that forth. I think it would be <laughs> wonderful. Thank you so much. Paige Stevenson um, is a master intuitive. You can find out more information about her uh, and her classes and all the good stuff at theintuitiveadvisor.com. Theintuitiveadvisor.com. If you don't want to have to worry about spelling that out, you can click the link in the show notes. Uh, that'll take you right there. And, um, and check out Paige's page. <laughs> <laughs> check out her <laughs> check out her website. Um you're you're going to be amazed at this woman and and definitely get in touch with her if you can. Um I thank want to you. thank you wonderful listeners through on all mm-hmm. the major podcast platforms. I also want to thank you viewers on YouTube because you got an extra treat. You got to actually uh see us and see my beautiful guest up close and personal Paige Stevenson. And if you resonated with any of this and I know you have because you wouldn't have stayed through this whole long conversation if you weren't really intrigued and you weren't really uh connecting with it so if you feel something share it make sure you Mm -hmm. share it with other people Mm -hmm. because you never Mm -hmm. know someone who really needs to hear it or to watch this video um Mm -hmm. they they would really appreciate it you could help change their lives a little bit so thank Mm -hmm. you so much um if you want more information about the podcast show go to out of the box with christine.com and if you want more information about my coaching services and all the stuff that i'm doing i'm doing live workshops i got boot camps i got so many things going on helping entrepreneurs yay i love teaching people i love 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 doing classes and workshops so all right? that information you can find at christineblosdale.com and all those links to Paige's site and my site and all of that will be in the show notes. So just make sure to mm-hmm. check it out. And as I always say, remember to think outside of that damn box. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>